terms of general maintenance, these are just general terms because it's not your responsibility as operators to maintain them, but a couple things. They should be examined for defects before use. Okay? On a regular basis, they should be examined to make sure that they're safe. Any unit experiencing a safety-related problem should be removed from service. You take it out. Truck should not be altered unless approved by the manufacturer, including the additional counterweights, and I've already described that, but we don't alter them in any way unless manufacturer approves it. Truck should be kept clean and in serviceable condition. Now, one of the things I often see, because it, when, when you're in a facility that runs 24-7, okay, all the time, you've got forklifts that are being used all the time. Nobody takes care of them. But somebody needs to. Somebody needs to make sure that the forklifts operate correctly. It's not uncommon when we go out and do safety audits that we'll see a fork truck, the horn doesn't work, the lights are broken, seat belts are gone. Okay? Now all of those are features that should not be allowed in a safe vehicle. So make sure, keep them clean and serviceable. Only authorized personnel can, could, should perform maintenance and then all maintenance should be done in designated areas. So that again, we don't just pull off to the side of the aisle out there and we do what we need to do. Now with, within this, for you guys who are operators, there is what is called a pre-use inspection. And you should be aware and do these things. Examine the vehicle at the beginning of each shift, right? Several times during the shift. Now, why you do it several times during the shift? Because things do work out during the shift, okay? So you always should be aware of how safe my vehicle is. You do it for three reasons. For your sake, so that you don't hurt yourself. People around you, that you don't run over them, and again, sake of the company that you don't destroy it. So do the pre-trip inspection. You're looking for these kinds of points. Now there may be others and we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get out there in certification. But tires and wheels, are they all good repair? Fluid leaks, do you see it around any of the connections on the, the uh, vehicle? Fluid levels, okay? so that they are operating in safe range. Conditions of all the hoses and fittings that may contribute to the leaks. Service and parking brakes, so again, they can stop you and they hold you when you're parked. And then steering integrity, again, make sure that you can steer it the way that you're supposed to. And then lastly, the conditions of the forks and or clamps. Now you guys have forks, but just making sure that they are positioned correctly, they are not, there's no cracks or anything like that in them. Now, here's a checklist. And, and someplace in the system, there ought to be a way that this is completed every day. And if you'll notice, Okay? You have what, what I call key off procedures, and it just lists several things that you should check during that, procedure, during that time. Check OK if there are any problems, okay? then you put out any corrective action. Second step is key on procedures. Right? Turn them on and do your lights work, does your horn work, those kind of things. And then lastly, engine running procedures. Right? Do these particular features, are they there and are they operational? And then again, any checks here, any corrective actions over here. To be completed at the beginning of each shift should be done. That way we know that it is safe to use for that particular shift. But remember, you may need to be checking it out two or three times during the shift. And then let me ask you this. What do you do with the sheet once it's, once it's completed? It Leave it in the truck? Put it the Give it to the supervisor? All the above. All the above? All the above. Okay, but there ought to be a system, and if there's not, you guys ought to suggest it. What do you do with these when we're finished? All right. Again, it, it, it verifies that the truck is in oper good operating uh, condition before we start. Now look at some of the hazards that you run into out there. A couple of things that you often see, okay? Now, I don't know where this guy came from or what he was about, but obviously he had some kind of a problem. Okay, you always have ramp safety. And again, you don't have a ramp out there, I don't think. Um, but anyway, you never turn on a ramp. Why? Okay, because the, the, the very nature of a forklift, it's not well balanced. So if you, if you turn on a ramp, then we have increased the potential of some kind of tip over. Okay? You guys have all kinds of hazards out there. Here's one in an aisle. What's the hazard? Just material stacked there, right? I will tell you, this, this, this waxes and wanes, right? There are some days when it's, there are more, more of this kind of material sitting out. Other days it's not there. But it comes and goes, but that's the nature of a busy business out there. All right? You have narrow aisles, and again, here's some materials stacked here on one side, but you have some narrow aisles. You may have an obstacle course down through there, I'm trying to get down there through there with a fork truck. Okay? Here's another one, and this one I think is over at the, the gear shop. You also have some overhead fall hazards. Now, this is not out in the warehouse, but I took this picture simply for this reason. 
This is probably about 12, 10 or 12 feet up. And here's the, the uh, pallet hung out here, and here's the load hung out here. Now, is that a hazard? Yeah, it is. You would think that there, there better, ought to be a better way for us to set this up here and be safer with it. I'm always concerned. You know, uh, you ever go into uh, Home Depot and, and see how high they stack that stuff? I was in there one day and I heard this noise. I look up and the guy on the forklift on the other aisle was putting something up over there that was pushing it off over me. Okay. Now, does that disconcern you? Sure it does. You'd be concerned about it. But you always want to be careful when you set it up there. Here's some overhead hazards. Again, you got your mast up. Here's an oops that occurred out in the uh, warehouse some years ago. It's still there. Uh, but anyway, they got up there somehow, some way, and, 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 and put it together. You can't see this. This is a uh, dock plate. Let me show you this one here. But you always want to make sure that they are in place before you go in and out of a trailer, right? You also have dock locks. Now, this is, I don't think this is you guys, but here's the dock locks, and you know how it works. If it's green, it's safe for you to go in with a truck. If it's red, you're not to go in with the truck. All right. Now, the opposite occurs from the outside. If you're the trailer driver on the outside, if it's green, means he can pull it away from the, the dock. If it's red, he's not to pull it away. So that's the dock lock system. Now, anytime you're driving a fork truck, all right, you should, before you go into the trailer for the first time, you should make sure if the dock locks are in place, are the wheels chocked, okay, if that's part of it, will the trailer actually hold the weight of your load that you're bringing in and the truck to make sure. Once again, in a, doing a training session across town, they, uh, they would, uh, had a lot of truck trailers coming in every day. And so what they would do is they'd back them up to the dock and then the, and the tractor would be pulled off. And so it's standing there on a jack stand, okay? And they got in an argument about whose responsibility is it to make sure that the, the trailer jack stands are in place. Well, whose responsibility is it? If I'm the fork truck driver, I don't want to drive in there if it's not in place, right? So again, you're going to take the responsibility to make sure it's safe to drive into the trailer before you start. Here's your battery charging areas. And again, no real issues other than to make sure that it's probably kept well, it's clean, and that everything is hooked up the way that it's supposed to be. And if there's need to be for personal protective equipment, it's there. Now, I, just, I took this picture just because I liked the way it looked. It was kind of somebody was loading out something, and uh, everything was neatly stacked. I just thought it looked nice, so I took the picture. Okay. But that's the way you want to do it. You want to make sure as much as possible. Not everything lends itself to that neatly stacked, right? I know that. But you still got to do it in a way that's safe. Now, always remember this. The safe work environment is the highest priority, and everyone is expected to contribute to it. All right? Secondly, always keep in mind that hazards exist everywhere out there. Every place you work, there are hazards. And then lastly, forklifts help us do our jobs more easily, but respect the hazards they represent. Drive safely. That's your responsibility and everybody else's responsibility that's out there. Okay, questions or comments? Clears mud? Okay. If you would, I need to give you a little quiz.